Hey up everyone! So, uh, some good news. I have just been confirmed for the 2024 Cannes Film Festival. So yeah, I'll be returning once again to France to cover the film festival. Woo! I'm actually going to be away in Thailand when they announce the lineup on the 11th of April. Uh, and I just won't have time while I'm on holiday to make a you know discussion video on that while it's fresh. So I thought I would just do a video now, theorizing what we might see in the lineup. Just one thing to note about the Cannes this year is that with everything that happened last year, with the writer strikes and the actors strikes, I am wondering if that's gonna have like a knock-on effect of like the films we get in the lineup this year. Last year we got some pretty big movies like Martin Scorsese's Kills of the Flower Moon. But what we might see this year is fewer high-profile filmmakers uh, in the lineup and more of a celebration of, you know, breakout, rising star filmmakers. As of right now, as I'm recording, we only have two films officially confirmed for Cannes this year. Uh, one of the big ticket films this year is the new George Miller, uh, Matt, well, it's Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. It's the latest film in the Mad Max uh, universe starring Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris Hemsworth. That is going to Cannes. Actually makes sense because nine years ago, um, George Miller's previous Mad Max movie, Mad Max Fury Road, played out competition there. So yeah, Cam really seems to like George Miller. They've had him several times. They had him for his previous film, 3,000 Years of Longing, although that film made about as much noise as a fart in a hurricane. Yeah, Cannes usually does have like one big like summer blockbuster movie in the lineup. Like last year was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, but the less said about that, the better. And we've had like Top Gun Maverick before. And yeah, so Furiosa just makes a lot of sense. Very much looking forward to watching that film, like on the biggest screen in Europe in the Palais. And we also have our opening film finally confirmed. It's the new comedy film from Quentin Dupois. Apologies if I'm saying any of these names wrong. There's a lot of big names in this and I'm probably bound to get a few incorrect. So forgive me. But yeah, it's called The Second Act. This is a comedy movie starring Leah Sadu, Vincent Lindon, and Louis Garrel. Those are the two films that we have officially confirmed for the festival. As for other films that we can probably expect to see in the lineup, it's a pretty safe presumption to say that Yorgos Lanthimos' new film, Kinds of Kindness, is probably going to be at the festival. The reason for that is because it does have a wide release date of June 28th, which takes place before, you know, the fall festival circuit takes off. So it's obviously not going to Venice or Telluride or anything like that. So it makes sense it would go to Cannes. In fact, Yorgos Lanthimos' previous film, Poor Things, was apparently supposed to go to Cannes last year, but it wasn't finished in time. So uh, it ended up going to Venice and actually ended up winning the top prize at Venice, the Golden Lion last year. Uh, and I do wonder if uh, Poor Things had gone to Cannes last year, would it have given like Justine Trier's Anatomy of Fall Run for her money for um, the top prize? Not actually sure. What do you guys think? Do you think if Poor Things had gone to Cannes, it would have won the Palm Door? Let me know in the comment section down below. But yeah, Kinds of Kindness is apparently an anthology film set in modern times and stars regular Yorgos Lanthimos collaborators like his go-to gal Emma Stone, who just won the Oscar for Poor Things. We also got Willem Dafoe. And then we got like Joe Alwyn, Margaret Qualley, as well as Hunter Schaefer and Hong Chow. And he's also got other Poor Things collaborators like Robbie Ryan doing the cinematography and Jessica Fendrix doing the score. So yeah, given the talent that's involved, if this film does go to Cannes, it will definitely be a high profile film. But yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident it's going to Cannes. I'm like 95% sure. Other possibilities include Andrea Arnold's new film Bird, which stars Barry Keoghan and Franz Rogowski, could be a possibility. Not too much is known about the film, but I'm a big fan of both those actors, so I kind of hope it does go there. Last time that Andriana was there was for American Honey in 2016. Sean Baker's new film, Anora, I'm hoping goes to Cannes. Sean Baker's the guy that gave us Red Rocket and The Florida Project and Tangerine, and he is someone who's been to Cannes himself a few times. Anora's plot is about a sex worker's journey from New York City to Las Vegas. But yeah, as soon as I heard Sean Baker, I was like, please, please, please. Cannes regular David Cronenberg will probably be back on the closet with his new film, The Shrouds. That stars Vincent Cassell and Diane Kruger. The plot is about a widowed businessman who finds a way to communicate with his dead wife. Perhaps it could be a midnight screening. His last film, Crimes of the Future, which went to Cannes, that was a midnight screening, I'm pretty sure. I've seen a lot of chatter on the internet for Clint Eastwood's latest film, Jura Number no. 2. Supposedly this is Clint Eastwood's final film, so everyone's trying to get their hands on it. I have a feeling the distributors are probably going to want to release it during the fall, so it has a proper like awards push, but there's a chance it could still show up at Cannes. The plot does sound pretty interesting, Interesting, to be fair. Uh, a man finds himself a juror on a murder trial only to discover that he committed the crime himself. So he faces a moral dilemma. Does he protect himself or turn himself in? The film stars Nicholas Holt, J.K. Simmons, Leslie Bibb, Kiefer Sutherland, Chris Messina, and Tony Collette. 
I mean, with that kind of star power, yes, please do take it to Cannes, but yeah, I could see it going somewhere else. One film that I'm really, really hoping does go to Cannes and does seem very Cannes-ish is uh, the new film from Robert Eggers, uh, his remake of Nosferatu. The reason I feel like it could go to Cannes is because, you know, Robert Eggers did bring The Lighthouse to Cannes and that was a big success. Ali Abbasi's new film about Donald Trump, who's played by Sebastian Stan, of all people, uh, that could go to Cannes. It's set in the 70s and 80s when Donald Trump was a real estate agent working in New York City. Um, sounds interesting, I'd be up for it. Oz Perkins has a new film called Long Legs, which is a horror thriller which stars Nicolas Cage as a serial killer who's being pursued by an FBI agent played by Micah Monroe. Mike Lee's got a new film coming out called Hard Truths. He's the filmmaker that gave us Peter Liu and uh, Mr. Turner. Apparently Kiyoshi Kurosawa has remade his own 1998 film The Way of the Serpent, so yeah, that could be in the lineup. Francois Ozon, who gave us Summer of 85, has a new film coming out. Different season this time, it's called when fall is coming. I really like Summer of 85, so I'd be happy to see him in the lineup. Julian Schnabel's got a new film out called In the Hands of Dante. Jacques Odiard has a new film coming out called Emilia Perez, which is a musical melodrama starring Carla Sofia uh, Gascon, uh, Zoe Saldana, and Selena Gomez. Three stars that I didn't know I needed to see in a movie together, but yeah, I'm down for it. Paolo Sorrentino's got a new film called Part and Hope, which stars Gary Oldman. Be down for that. What else do we have? Mikel Franco's Dreams, uh, Leo Car Taxes, c'est pas moi. <laughs> God, my French is terrible. I've been going to camp for like seven years and my French is still abysmal. Suivez moi. Follow me. <laughs> Le vache va ma la touche après jeudi. Thanks to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it translates to The Cow Shall Touch Me from Thursday, I believe. Audrey Dewan has a new movie coming out called Emmanuel, which is a French remake of the erotic film, which stars Naomi Watts and Naomi Melon. Uh, here's a name I'm probably gonna butcher, so apologies in advance. Alain Gurrier Diaz has a new film called Misericorde. Not sure what it's about, but it is in the rumor mill. Oh yeah, Na Hong Jing has a new movie coming out with Michael Fassbender and Alyssa Vikander. It's a thriller called Hope. Uh, we've got another contender for a potential midnight screening, which is Harmony Kareen's Baby Invasion. Terrence Malick's got a new film that he's apparently been making since like 2019 called The Way of the Wind, which is apparently a film about several major uh, episodes in the life of Christ. If it does go to Cannes, I wonder if it'll be booed. I know the Tree of Life got booed. Oh yeah, one film that I personally am particularly keen to see is the new film from Pablo Lorraine, who did Spencer. It's called Maria, which is a biopic of the opera singer Maria Callas, who's played in this film by Angelina Jolie. And obviously because Spencer netted Kristen Stewart her first Oscar nomination, maybe Pablo Ray can do for Angelina Jolie what he did for Kristen Stewart. Who knows? It sounds like a nice meaty part for her and she's kind of been away for a little while, Angelina Jolie, so I'm sure audiences will be keen to see this one. It kind of explores the tumultuous, beautiful and tragic life of the world's greatest opera singer recreated during her final days in 1970s Paris. Oh yeah, I'm not convinced this one is gonna happen, but it, it, it's a possibility. We could see uh, Ty West's Maxine show up, maybe as part of the Midnight Screening. This is the third film in the X and Pearl trilogy and stars Mia Goff, who's also a producer. One film that I'm not getting my hopes set too high going to Cannes is the new film from Luca Guadagnino called Queer, which stars Daniel Craig. Uh, the premise of that movie sounds very enticing as a gay man, doy. But uh, I don't think it's gonna go to Cannes simply because Luca Guadagnino's you know, previous film, Challenges, is getting its release in April, which is just a few weeks prior to Cannes. So all the attention will kind of be on Challenges at that point. They're gonna wanna kind of focus on that, I believe, in Zendaya, Josh O'Connor, and Mike Face. The Challenges was supposed to debut at Venice, but it got delayed because of the strikes. But I have a feeling that Queer will probably go to this year's Venice Film Festival. Uh, makes sense as well, he is Italian. So yeah, as much as I would love to see Queer in the lineup, I have a feeling it's not going to happen. But Back Anavari has a new film called Hello Road. Don't know too much about it, but it stars Rosamund Pike. Lynn Ramsey has a new film coming out called Polaris, which stars Rooney Mara. Also, Pixar films aren't strangers to Cannes, perhaps Inside Out 2, could get its uh, world premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, its previous predecessor film, uh, Pete Doctor's Inside Out, uh, that got its start nine years ago, same year as Mad Max actually, yeah, uh, got its start at Cannes. And uh, so there's every reason to think that Inside Out 2, which is directed by Kelsey Mann, could get its start here. Uh, I, I hope it does, because I do love watching a Pixar movie in Cannes. If it does go to Cannes, it will probably play out of competition. Oh, here's another name I'm probably gonna butcher, uh, Cyril. Sarah Brennikov's uh, Limonov, The Ballad of Eddie, uh, stars uh, Ben Whishaw. A lot of people seem pretty confident that this is going. I don't know too much about it, but uh, 
Yeah, Ben Wisher sold. Also in the rumor mill, we've got Alex Sharfman's Death of a Unicorn, uh, Mark Anthony Green's Opus, Nabil Ayuchi's Everybody Loves Tuda, and Gil's or Giles and Gil's Le Homme's Le More Oof. Probably pronounced all that wrong, I'm so sorry. And the one film that's on a lot of people's lips that a lot of people are hoping goes to Cannes, but we're not so sure if it will, is the new film from Francis Ford Coppola called uh, Megalopus. The reason the film is getting discussed a lot is because this is Francis Ford Coppola's first film since 2016's Distant Vision. It's also a film which he has self funded to get off the ground, okay, it is a passion project for him. And also this year is the 45 year anniversary of Francis Ford Coppola's masterpiece, Apocalypse Now, which won the Palme d'Or at Cannes back in 1979. So uh, there's a nice little bit of like, I don't know, full circle poetic history happening there if they can get um, Francis Ford Coppola in the lineup. I'm sure they would want to have him in the lineup just for that reason. But uh, apparently, according to like the first initial reactions of people that have seen it, they're not overwhelmingly excited about it or like overly positive about it. So maybe it's not as good as we're hoping it's gonna be, but I don't know, I could still probably see it getting into the can lineup. I feel like they would probably want to have it, even if it doesn't turn out to be all that good. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot, um, Mickey 17, the new film from Bong Joon-ho, whose previous film, Parasite, won the Palme d'Or back in what, 2019? Uh, that's not going to Cannes, sorry guys, the film has been delayed till 2025. I know some people were excited at the prospect of Bong Joon-ho coming back to the closet with a new film, especially a big budget one with uh, Robert Pattinson as the star. So yeah, uh, not happening this year, sadly. Maybe next year. And that's kind of where I'm at with the films that I think might go to the Cannes Film Festival, but there's gonna be loads of films that aren't even on my radar yet that are going to be in the lineup or in the director's fortnight or, you know, screening out competition. Uh, what films are you guys predicting that will get into the Cannes Film Festival lineup? What are you excited for? Whatever you have to say about the Cannes Film Festival, do let me know in that comment section down below. But yes, like I said, I will be at the Cannes Film Festival this year. I'll be providing lots of early reviews for lots of the high profile films in the program. So if you want those reviews, make sure to click uh, subscribe. My goal is to try and get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you can help me out, I would really appreciate it. And if you want all of my freshest reactions and opinions from the Cannes Film Festival, be sure to follow me on the socials, all the links to those in the video description down below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.